Uh, good good morning, uh, everybody. So uh, we are going to be starting in this channel a series of lectures, which is based on the keynote system in homeopathy. So what I have realized is that most of the people, most of the people do not really understand the keynote system. Whereas keynote system forms a very predominant part of homeopathic practice. Unfortunately, not many people really understand it and the different levels at which the keynote system is actually practiced. This is absolutely not known to people. And so this is an attempt uh, wherein we are actually going to provide a glimpse, a first, you know, of what the keynote system actually is and subsequently how actually I use it in my practice will be illustrated through many, uh, many, many cases. I am thinking initially at least maybe uh, six or seven different cases, different types of cases. So before we do that, let us uh, get a brief understanding of what actually the keynote system is. So let me share my screen. Okay, so basically this is where we look at. Keynote system and characteristic symptoms are actually all related. They are very, very similar. So the way we look at it, the first person ever who, you know, who basically came up with the idea of the keynote system was our very beloved Boninghausen. So what he said basically uh, is that these are symptoms which illustrate the individuality of the patient. Now, according to Boninghausen, these symptoms could be found in the mind, in the emotions, dreams, in the general tendencies, food cravings, sleep, sex, even the predispositions, the way a person is, his characteristics, his mental and emotional characters. So now if these are characteristic symptoms, what are keynotes? Now, what he says is that keynotes are characteristic symptoms and they are a subset of characteristic symptoms. So basically it could be uh, the way you actually need to understand what keynotes are, are basically that they these are symptoms which are produced by very, very few remedies. Very, very few remedies have actually produced these symptoms. And so, because very few remedies have actually produced these symptoms, the moment we come across such a keynote, we can actually say that because these keynotes are produced by a few remedies, we actually come very quickly to a subset of remedies very quickly. Suppose you identify a very characteristic symptom, a very, very unique symptom, and that is only covered by very, very few remedies. Then your uh, observation field or the potential differential field, which you use to differentiate the different remedies that eventually the patient would require is drastically reduced. So, and, and these keynotes are not built up suddenly. They have a long history. They have been built up over a long period of time, in, ma uh, in many cases, many centuries. And uh, what, you know, a, a mentor of mine, Dr. Paul Hershu, says is that they are symptoms that by long association of a profession have led to or pointed to a certain remedy. They are highly leveraged symptoms, symptoms that by their own help, you know, they can distinguish something which is a very, very grand characteristic or a strong symptom of that remedy. So another way of saying it is that a keynote is a symptom that so strongly speaks to a strong common quality of a remedy that you assign to it a higher value than any other symptoms within that remedy or within that maybe a larger quality of that remedy. So it is something like saying that 
this particular symptom is so strong in that remedy that when you look at the remedy and its various symptoms, this one symptom, because it is present, because it is present in very, very uh, few remedies, this becomes very, very important for that remedy. Okay. So it is like saying that every remedy will have a hundred symptoms or so, or probably more. If, for example, the keynote or a certain symptom is present in only two or three remedies, then that particular symptom is actually what we call the keynote. Now, there are different definitions. I gave you the definition based on Dr. Uh, Clemens Maria von Boninghausen. There is actually a particular great doctor who actually coined this term keynotes, you know. Earlier, they were using other terms for it, you know, very, very characteristic symptom or very main, or they would say that it is a very important symptom. After Gernsey, he basically coined the very term keynote. So what he says is that he gives the example of aconite. This is what is there in this document. He says he compares it to flowers, you know, for a layman, all the flowers look very, very similar. They don't, uh, you know, they are not different. Uh, you know, all the flowers look similar. You know, they come from maybe all red flowers look the same. But, you know, there is a difference between the different types of even red flowers. A rose will be very, very different than, for example, some other red flowers. So each of them will have its, have a, has its own characteristics. And so if for a botanist, even two very, very, very similar flowers, which otherwise are identical in all respect to the discerning botanist, he will be able to differentiate two different, almost identical flowers based on some characteristic. So what he says is that because, you know, uh, you know, you have many, many symptoms. He says he talks of aconite. He talks of aconite. And then what actually happens in aconite is that it has probably lots and lots of provings, very many, many proving symptoms. Now, when you have so many proving symptoms in aconite, there are few symptoms in aconite which are produced by aconite and aconite alone. Not many other drugs produce it. For example, in aconite, you have a very, very characteristic symptom. There are two characteristic symptoms. There are two characteristic symptoms. One of the characteristic symptom is basically a certain strong fear of death that is there. You know, the patient has an excessive fear of death. That becomes a predominant symptom in aconite, okay? Now, along with this predominant symptom of aconite, which is uh, a strong fear of death, you also see certain physiological manifestations which accompany this strong fear of death, that is palpitations. So when you see a strong fear of death, along with palpitations, then you can really think of aconite, okay, this could be one of the most important remedies that come under considerations, you see? This is, and aconite has some other symptoms. There is another very peculiar characteristic or keynote symptom of aconite. It is that the suddenness and the violence of impact of a certain kind of fever or a cough or a cold, the suddenness and the violence of impact. This is also another keynote symptom of aconite. Now, these two symptoms take, if you just take the suddenness of symptoms, maybe aconite shares it with belladonna, maybe it shares it with maybe tarantula and other things. Now, along with this, if you combine these two keynotes, like for example, the fear of death with palpitations, and then you also see that there is sudden onset, then, you know, there are very few remedies which have these two very important keynotes present, you know, in the same remedy. 
So you can actually come to the right remedy very, very quickly. There is no need for you, if you provided you know the, uh, the proving symptoms of every drug properly and provided you give it a brief or a certain uh, uh, you know understanding that the other symptoms of the rem of the patient are also covered by aconite you know you have rapidly arrived at that remedy so this is uh, you know a small you know uh, the way Guernsey talks about it it is there you know you can read it I'm not going to go over it uh, line by line or uh, word by word you know I'm just going to read a certain paragraph uh, or paragraphs which Gunsi talks about. This is available in on the internet, uh, the introduction to the keynote system by Gunsi. I'm going to put the link in the uh, below the YouTube in the description. So for those people who are interested, they can go through it. So what, what does Gunsi say? Gunsi says, this symptom or condition, these symptoms or conditions form the keynote or keynotes of aconite as a medicine. Okay, then he says, unfurnishes the key to its indications in disease. Thus, in instituting comparisons between medicines, by taking all the symptoms and comparing them carefully, we will find that each one presents, besides the fundamental similarity to all the others, peculiar differences from all the others. And these invariable points of peculiar difference are the key notes in a comparison of such remedies. Here then, we have the characteristic peculiarity in the disease that individualizes that case. And we are enabled to call up from the storehouse of the Materia Medica and place in opposition with it that medicine which possesses in its pathogenesis a corresponding similar characteristic, peculiarity or a keynote and which will prove to be the curative agent for that case of disease. Now, this is what Guernsey talks about. Now I want to talk to you about a last aspect of the keynote system, okay? And so that every one of you is able to read what I'm writing or what is written on the computer. Uh, I'm also going to be reading the same thing, okay? So anyway, before I read this and before I explain what is written below, many people suggest that, you know, keynote system is in conflict with the doctrine of totality of symptoms that is basically propounded by Dr. Hanman and uh, among others by Kent. Kent also emphasizes the totality of symptoms. Now, the problem is that when you look at something in isolation without, uh, without understanding keynotes, then you will fall in error. Okay, basically what, and you are welcome to uh, read this later on, basically what Gunsi talks about, it is not just enough if you just cover the keynote of the remedy. You know, keynotes may be found in maybe four or five, uh, you know, remedies. Four or five remedies may, or maybe in some cases, seven or eight, even 10 remedies may cover a particular keynote. Then, you know, simply because a certain remedy comes to your mind, which has that keynote, for example, you know, somebody is intolerant of wearing a tie or he cannot, you know, tolerate tight collars. You cannot simply say, because you know the most well-read remedy or well-known remedy which is there in the Materia Medica lachesis has that symptom. You cannot come to the conclusion that the patient requires lachesis immediately. No, you can't do that. So what you need to do, there are other remedies, for example, Cactus grandiflorus, for those of you who don't know, which also covers this uh, you know, this constriction around the throat, around the waist, also medorinum, a nosode which covers this constriction around the neck. There are many other polycrests also which cover this constriction around the neck simply because lechesis is a well-known remedy which covers the uh, keynote of constriction or tightness around the neck which aggravates. You cannot give lechesis. So anyway, what, what Guernsey actually says is that you have a keynote that will lead you to a bunch of remedies. If you find two keynotes very well, it may, it may narrow down your choice to maybe four or five remedies. Then when you come to the you know, potential difference field of five or six remedies, finally, you have to ensure that not only the keynotes are covered, 
but also the entire totality of the case, his generals, his peculiar disposition, his constitution is covered by that remedy. If you do that, a well-selected remedy, wherein you have selected the remedy based on a particular keynote, and you have also made sure that the other symptoms, important symptoms in reference to the case are selected, then you select that remedy and you give to give that remedy the appropriate potency that will work for your patient. Right. If you just base your prescription on just the keynote, then you will not make you will not be making a successful prescription. And that is definitely not the minimum for the patient. So now I'm just going to talk to you about some levels of keynotes and certain examples of keynotes. This is very, very interesting. So please uh, bear with me for another three or four minutes. So let us say, what is a keynote? See, there are different categories of keynotes. You know, some categories of keynotes which are based on, for example, physical and pathologies, okay? Physical complaints, you know, physiological complaints and physiopathological complaints. One first one I say is a keynote, keynotes which are shared by a sizable group of remedies. Now, for example, generals, convulsions, injuries after. You will notice arnica, sisuta, cuprum, hypericum, ladum, natrum self. That's among others. There are 10 remedies in synthesis which cover these. Okay. Now, you have another symptom, for example, in this category, as an example, vertigo turned about as if in bed. So what it means is you a person is sitting on the bed. For him, it looks as if he's stationary. The bed is just a placeholder. It could be anything else. The bed itself is rotating. That's what it means. Vertigo turned about as if bed. It appears as if the patient is stationary, but the rest of the world is rotating. And here you see cadmium sulfide, conium, nux vomica, pulsatilla. You see that? So the second category comes here. Keynotes which are shared by few remedies. Now these are even more, you know, these are real, real keynotes if you want, or you can call them advanced keynotes. Certain Keynotes, which are shared by probably two or three or maximum four remedies. So one such keynote is mind unconsciousness, eruptions, suppression of, suppression of eruptions after. The main remedy is zinc metallicum. So if you are in a situation wherein you see somebody in coma and you come to know that there was just before the onset of the coma, this person had some eruptions suppressed by a dermatologist or by giving him some remedies, topical applications, then very rapidly your mind should go to Zinca Metallicum. That is the predominant keynote. And there are not other remedies which cover this symptom, you see. Mm -hmm. This is a very high value keynote. That's what I call it. Okay. Let's take another example. Again, mind unconsciousness, but with the jaw dropping. You see? There are only three remedies in our materia medica synthesis, which cover this lycopodium, opium, and sulfur. So again, it's a simple matter, you know, to cover, for example, the rest of the symptoms. You know, if you know the materia medica of each remedy, a brief talk with a caregiver or a family relative, you will probably zero in on one of the three very, very quickly. You see? There is another uh, mental keynote, for example, mind presumptuous. There are three or four remedies in synthesis. One of them is lycopodium, the other is palladium, the other is platina. The spinum, S-P-H-E-N-H, -H, is a new addition. You know, I do not know much about it. But out of these three, lycopodium, palladium, and platina, you can see two of them are highly egoistic remedies. What happens is sometimes in before the onset of the pathology, a person, person may presume things without verifying them in his mind. It's like a delusion, you know. He may, for example, presume something which may not be the truth at all. And because, for example, 
uh, a simple thing could be that you know uh, a person fell into coma or fell into some kind of a stroke in the head because there was for example a sudden loss loss of you know a stock for example you know in the share market or for example the stock suddenly started falling or he wakes up in the morning and then suddenly he sees that his house has been burgled you know now without bothering about it or verifying whether you know in such cases what happens is the intellect takes a hit you become very emotional so the person you know they for all you know it may have been a minor burglary nothing would have stolen you know but in his mind he is presumed that he has already lost lakhs of rupees or maybe crores you know and in the other case he has actually uh, come to a conclusion without there being any basis for it that the share of his stock in which he had invested lakhs and lakhs suddenly has become you know you know has come down to single digits or something like that and in after this i'm just giving as an example suppose he suffers a stroke or he suppose he goes into some kind of coma or he goes into he goes he drives in a, he, he rushes out of the house you know calling the police and he gets into an accident you see in all such cases this wonderful rubric mind presumptuous can be considered now the last one that i'm going to talk about and i'm going to be talking about it in very brief now see uh, there are certain peculiar mental qualities which are there and shared by very very few remedies okay now among them some peculiar mental emotions and delusions and imaginations these are two categories okay so now suppose there is a delusion for example the first example mind delusions imaginations attracted by okay now just the delusion there may not be any substance in it in reality the perception that this person is being attacked even though there may not be any basis for it in reality can create a deep pathology in a person and if you for example recently i had the occasion of treating somebody uh, who was involved in an interreligious marriage and without taking any names the girl was constantly feeling under some kind of threat that she will be attacked or some member of her own family will attack her family her new family that is her and her husband this combined with the fact that she was a very duty conscious person combined with the fact that there was a certain amount of guilt in her that she had married outside her religion made me consider kali bromatum a single dose of kali bromatum tenum relieved a pathology which was actually a calcified granuloma of the brain causing intense headache a single dose of kali bromatum tenum completely you know relieved her of that particular pain and you know the funny thing is when the person's uh, you know is getting healthier he will lose these strong pathologies and start getting you know cold and cough you know a couple of days you know back she had called me saying she has got cold and cough now do i need any medicine i said don't worry about it it's a very wonderful thing that you have got cold and cough and uh, you know and i verified that she does not have any headache so this is from you know the miasm shifting from syphilis to psychosis to sora and we should not you know do anything to uh, either interfere with a remedy or anything like that unless and until it becomes you know some problem usually in most cases none nothing of this happens the patient you know gradually shifts the miasmatic state and he even the acute problems that arise go away spontaneously so another uh, so that's about that small mini case the other uh, strong you know uh, symptom mind prejudiced here arsenic and lecheses okay so uh, there are 
you know, these were the two remedies. And I had occasion to treat another lady recently, okay? And I took about one hour, one and a half hours debugging her case. The only thing that stood out in her case was that as soon as she got married into her husband's family, she felt that her, she was, there was a lot of partiality going on between her and her elder sister-in-law, okay? And she felt discriminated against. This was the only thing running throughout the remedy. I talked to her about almost one and a half hours again and again. She used to say, she used to say in Canada, or tumba partiality madhru, sir, and that hurt me very much. So based on that, I gave, and she her principal complaint, she had other complaints, but her principal complaint was varicose veins. The first remedy I gave, simisifuga, without much effect. Then I zeroed in on arsenic based on her uh, symptoms. And I asked her whether she was a chilly patient or whether she was a cold patient, okay? She said she was very hot. So I gave her arsenic iode. I think I probably gave her one M potency single dose. That's it. The following day, she called me up. Sir, I lost my varicose pains. That were the deep varicose pains from which I was getting troubled every night. They just vanished. So I am waiting on that case to see how much her other pathologies also get impacted. She had also complained of dryness of her mouth and arsenic coyote covers it. For me, you know, that's a follow-up that I am looking forward to. So I, I was just trying to tell you that how you can use keynotes. See, in the last two cases, you know, I, I gave you some examples of the cases I treated. I didn't, I didn't just consider the keynote. I considered the keynote Along with that, I took into account her whole constitution and made sure that the totality was covered, that the materia medica was pointing also to the same remedy. You know, of course, you don't need to do it for a long time. You best, you just tick the major mental symptoms, the generals and the, the predisposition, the nature of the person. If you see that, you know, for example, in the last case, I knew that you know, throughout her life, she was worried about the future, about money, lack, again, arsenic, very, very clear. So, you know, you can be very, very confident in your prescription. And in many cases, as our Bellwood mentor, Dr. Praful Vijaykar and his son, Dr. Amrish Vijaykar and the whole predictive homeopathic team have taught us, you don't need to repeat remedies, especially in those cases, because they come from a certain perception that has gone wrong in the individual. And so you don't need to repeat remedies when all that you're trying to do is change the perception. A perception or a delusion or a deep perception, even delirium, is the result of a very, very, very fine, very subtle kind of perception or no subtle kind of mind. Now to deal with the subtle kind of mind, the subtlest medicine in the minimum dose from my experience has been sufficient. So I hope you like this video and uh, it was very nice of uh, nice for me also to uh, talk to you here in my clinic and uh, give you this, uh, this piece of information. I look forward to sharing many, many more cases, different kinds of cases, uh, wonderful cases. Uh, you know, I would also say lip watering, mouth watering cases uh, in the coming days and weeks. So for now, please press the bell icon, you know, subscribe to our channel and that's it from me. Thank you.